Okay, so welcome to the Light Inspired series, our podcast kickoff of a variety of topics, different types of tools, and what I like to call metaphysical potpourri, where we're just going to go into any type of section and see where it leads us. My name is Abby Zukowski. I kind of call myself like a cosmic custodian. I like to go around, clean up energy wherever I can. Sometimes I put myself in this category of a silent healer. But yeah, just kind of always changing and evolving. Got a lot of people in the house with us today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I am Saloni. I've been in spiritual industry and working on myself for quite some time, which inspired me to come up with this whole idea of spirituality and tapping more depth into yourself. Um, Because what we think, what we feel what we be is who we are and if we could change all of that and gain a higher perspective we could be so much more and i want to help people open up their mind and hearts to other things yeah and i am emily monternak i don't have that descriptive of a detail for me so i like to be i'm going to call it down to earth today where we really connect that from what it was where you're feel like you're normal if you even want to call it that because everybody's normal in some form or fashion but also connecting to that greater being in yourself and being able to see all the beautiful things that come up in life. Yeah, so, and one of my favorite things about the three of us getting together was we were taking a little road trip, checking out a place for maybe a retreat or some overnight experience, and when we were in the car, we just had a variety of topics that came up, and then all of a sudden, we were like, we should do a podcast. (laughs) And that is literally how this was born. So, any topics that we want to dig into today? Well, the one that comes to mind would be We create self-belief, self-valve, self-contracts that we are unconsciously and consciously are creating. And that could either destroy us and destroy other people, or it could make or break us. And I wanted to see how we could help you turn that around to help you build yourself instead of destructing yourself. So let's see if we could tap into any of these limited beliefs that we have going on and how we could help you gain a higher perspective so you could be your best self. I love that. And, you know, I've always been leery of having to sign my name to like on waivers because I do think unconsciously I well, there's something that I don't like to have to sign my signature on, first of all. But that is when I first became aware of physical contracts Mm -hmm. of you know, just doing business, going to a doctor's office that really started to catch my attention of. I don't like signing my name on stuff. (laughs) And I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Uh, Yeah, actually, it's really funny you bring that up. Um, I went through a period of life where I was like, I shortened my official signature and I chose when I was going to use it and when I wasn't going to use it. So if it was something like I use my card at the store, right? I used the shorter one and adjusted. And then if it was something like, oh, I'm going to work at this location for a period of time, something that was more serious, I would use the full signature. And I don't know what it was, but at that time I had this process where I was like, should I be signing this full thing? Or what does it actually mean, right? And how much does that mean when it's out there for Mm -hmm. that other person to have it? Now you brought up contracts with people, like relationships, friends, family, because this can get... Oh, it's a a very uh, hefty uh, topic. What I meant was before you even, you're hesitating signing a physical contract is because there's mental stuff going on that you remember from past life experiences that you had when you did sign a contract from a mind to mind or heart to heart conversations. I mean, even a little things like this saying, because my previous relation sucked, I will never find love again. You just made a contract there to yourself saying, I will never find love again. Mm -hmm. Now, every single person that comes into your life in personal relationship, business relationship, friendship, you're going to say, I will never find that love again. So I'm going to keep them distant because you have that belief that is keeping you there. And it's a very unconscious thing that's playing out into your physical reality. But you could undo that at any time. That's your free will to choose. So you could say, I uncreate, delete, destroy. I will never love again. 
from this moment forward, I choose to love again. I choose to love people, places, things. I am comfortable loving myself. I am comfortable signing what I need to. Just reframing those little words and making new vows for yourself. It becomes a new contract that you're creating. And then now, this moment forward, universe will bring everything to you that is aligned to that new contract. I like that. So it really kind of makes people aware and responsible for your own energetic thinking, feeling, physical being, and overall wellness. Because I am a big fan of saying, or well, believing that A, we're spell casting all the time. Oh, Emily's probably time. heard me talk about this <laughs> in our book club. I always said that I'm like, words are spells, so use it wisely. I've always said that, but it never really like clicked into the physical reality until, you know, somebody's like, oh, you are right. And I'm like, yes, I am right. <laughs> and, well, because I do feel like it starts first with our thoughts. And then as soon as you speak it and there's energy behind it, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's out. Yep. Is there a way to change that? Or is that where you have to go back and again, refix the thoughts, refix the words and the energy? I mean, even writing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm big on journaling. Writing is, for me, mm -hmm. spellcasting. It's putting it on the paper. It's putting in the emotions, the feelings. And that can be good and bad. It is. Depending on the intention behind it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I always say it always starts with your inner sight. Inner sight is so important because your mouth could be saying unconscious things, but what you're actually meaning is completely different. And so your goal is to align what you mean to what you speak to form that action. You know, and it's really hard, but you have to catch yourself. The patterns that show up on unconscious, conscious basis all the time. Um, my recent one right now, I'll tell you, it's great. <laughs> so I've been a plant killer for a long time. <laughs> <Murder>. <laughs> Don't know why, but I'm like, why is this keep following me? Like I got, I am so interested in having plants in my house. I went and got a bunch of plants. They're starting to get all wilted and stuff and I'm getting really pissed off. I'm like, I am creating this and I am so frustrated. I'm like, well, vows that I made that says I'm a plant killer that is causing this, all my plants to like die. So I had to like go back, undo the stuff and reformat it so hopefully they'll survive. <laughs> do you talk to them? I do. <laughs> okay, because I oh, yeah. felt that of talking to the plants, touching them. I'll look at water and I'll put energy mm -hmm. into that and then water them. So it's almost like they are a pet in my house yep. or a family member or something like that. I get it. I think everybody struggles with <laughs> plants. Yeah, definitely. I think mine is the lighting combination of overwatering or underwatering. So I haven't found that happy medium <laughs> to keep the plant alive. We're going to have to follow your journey on this. <laughs> We're going to have to check in in a couple months and see where the process is. So first of all, do you believe that we're coming in with contracts already pre-agreed upon? And if so, can those be broken or changed? Or do we have to fulfill yeah. them? This is what my intake on this and based on what I've learned through my meditations and what I found was mainly because I remember so much of my past lifetimes that it's so vivid to me. And it was one of those things that is just needed to be acknowledged and released and felt by me. So from that perspective, I was still carrying on a lot of agreements that I made in past lifetimes. They were playing out in this lifetime because I refused for whatever reason to let them go. And, it, you know, it showed up in uh, different people. It showed up in relationship, friendship, showed up in coworkers. It showed up in people, pl pl even places uh, that I was drawn to specifically because I had like 26 years of lifetime back then. So I'm like drawn to that lifetime again. So it's one of those patterning that I had to like, where is this coming from? But it doesn't start until you, because of your free will, you have to learn to ask questions, right? Questions of self journey. Where is this coming from? Why do I do this? Why do, what's keeping me here? Here. So all of these questions of internal self, and then when you ask a question, learn to drop into your heart and allow yourself to receive the answer, and then go in with your mind's eye and see where it takes you. And then for sure enough, you'll get the answer that you need sooner or later, so you can reaffirm and recreate your reality, so you don't play out old patterning. You could walk away from any vows, any contracts, even past marriages. Like sometimes people were married to one particular person in past lifetime for so long, but they end up keep divorcing in this lifetime mm -hmm. because they're stuck to that energy. Interesting. Yeah. Because they're stuck to that energy, they can't move on. 
they want to move on. Like part of them tells them, I want to move on. I want to find that person. But they can't because that old pattern is playing out. So they have to address that for them to kick out of that cycle to start a new cycle. I think that's like a really good way to think about it from an individual and from past lifetimes. Mm-hmm. But then you've got your ancestral mm-hmm. as well. So when you're talking about the like group of souls that you come in with and who you're there with, part of it depends on who you're with. So from mm-hmm. the, that example you just shared about who you were married to previously and having that connection. But if you had kids at that point or they had kids Mm -hmm. all of that then comes in too so at some point in time all of those souls come together so I have connections to what my parents went through and Mm. what their parents went through Mm -hmm. from a whole different perspective and how to work through that so I know that's been coming up more in recent things if you go look at anything for psychology and some of that too connecting back Mm -hmm. to some of the sciences of how do you release that trauma from something that happened and it just starts re repeating. Some examples of that are like physical or other abuse that people experience. Mm-hmm. And then that gets passed on through the genealogy or our DNA. And I think that's an interesting way to think about it too, when you can connect those two worlds, not just from mm-hmm. the physical and the emotional, right? Mm-hmm. But you can connect bigger than that mm-hmm. on what happened previously. So let's say somebody is in a relationship, I know we kind of touched on this, and they want to break a soul contract and maybe come up with a new energy. So what are the steps that they need to take? Would you say like step number one is figure out what you want, you know, or do you start by just saying I break all contracts in this lifetime and previous lifetimes? What are the steps? That's a little tricky, right? And that's where you have to become that observer part. It's really hard, but you have to be very vigilant on what every single thought that comes up, every single feeling that arises, every single thing that you feel um, in the physical world, and then how is this all making sense. So you have to become a puzzle fitter uh, of your own reality, and when you do that, things will make sense. But it's really hard. Like, we can't answer that for you just because we don't know what your soul contract is about. You're the only one who carries those keys. I don't know the house to your keys. I don't have that Um, or keys to your house. So you have that's why you have to dig so deep where there's nothing left about you to find out but yourself. When you find yourself, you find you unlock the doors to the universe. You could walk into any single one of them and you'll you'll feel liberated and free. Yes. All right. So we have to visit the topic of infringement. And if you don't know what infringement is, it's trying to change somebody. I have so many questions about infringement Mm -hmm. only because I'm curious. I feel that I was taught that Jesus Christ as an energy just saw people the way that they already were, which was happy, healed, abundant, all of this stuff. So I'm wondering if us as beings, if that is a form of infringing. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so a lot of times I think about this from a acceptance, right? So when you see someone and you accept them as they are, even if it's not something. So I don't have any tattoos, for example, and I haven't ever had a plan to get one unless there was a really, really specific reason. So my sisters and I, right, like we've talked about it, but at the same time, it has never happened. <laughs> so, but there have been a number of people who have come into my life and it's perfectly fine to be around that for them to feel like it's super important to them and to have that part of that. And to me, I feel like I can accept them as I are and still share my point of view when I'm full within myself and have that commitment to myself, but also and am able to share that with them, but also support them as part of that. So if, for example, though, I were to say, of course, you're not going to get a tattoo and to like prevent them from going and doing that, obviously that's infringement. But another way, too, is to, like, look, your tattoo looks like crap. <laughs> you know? like, it's a piece of art, and it means something to them, right? They wouldn't have gotten it. So, you know, th- there's different ways of viewing that. Going back to your question about, like, Jesus Christ at that point, then, you know, we all still see the world the way we see it. And that's where those thoughts create what we visually see in front of us. And so if he at his time had this view that everyone is perfect. Everyone is perfect in his view. And 
I agree with that, actually. Yeah. Everyone is perfect. We all have what we're growing through and what we're learning from. And I think that's okay. Whether it's infringement or not, it depends on, from my view, if it's acceptance of who they are, whether it's something I agree with or not, or wherever they're at. I don't think so. Okay. But I am interested if either of you have a different point of view. Okay, something that I do with writing, because I do call it like writing into existence. For example, I would write about my significant other, and I would be like, he no longer smokes, he doesn't desire it, he eats more vegetables, he's so happy. Uh -uh. So that's infringement. (laughs) (laughs) That's infringement. Right. Because because that's what you want. That's not what he wants. His intention could be, I want to be a meat eater. I want to be the who I am. Can you accept me for who I am and not change me? And if you can't, your answer is a no. You, that's universe telling you to walk away. But you have no right to write about somebody. Yeah. Because you're unconsciously sending them telepathic messages to change. Yeah. And you're stepping on unenergetic will. So the only thing you could do, what I want, I want, I desire a person who is a vegetarian. I desire a person who's sexy. Mm-hmm. I desire a person who I am meant to be with. I desire a person who uplifts me. Empow- empowers me, who wants to communicate. He he is well-rounded. Think about all the things that you want. Stay, keep that focus on you, and then let universe deliver all the things that you want. It might not be that person. It might be completely someone who could, universe will blow your mind. That has happened to me. They will blow your mind and blow your expectations, but because you're doing this, it's not allow, you're not allowing universe to deliver that. Your mind is creating that. So now when people go to work, And let's say they're in a group environment where they don't love a lot of their coworkers. Mm -hmm. Do you just sit there, observe, and let them have their experience and kind of turn off your energetic wall so you're not absorbing what I call spewing energy? So this is a good one because me being in an HR, this has been a huge, right? Everybody, everybody hates HR. Like as soon as we walk in, be like, oh, HR is here. We don't want to talk. <laughs> we get that whole shitty wife <laughs> from employees. But like at the same time, we had to like learn to be like, hey, I am still here to support you. I still want to hear what you have to say. I understand where you're coming from. I still want to help you. That's coming from a compassion, understanding standpoint. Uh, otherwise, not from a judgmental point where you're so, oh, she's being this, she's being that, she's being this. That's a judgmental point. You're projecting your views onto them. But allowing, that person wants to feel that way. Let them have their experience. You have no right, right to rob their experience. They choose to feel shitty. Let them feel shitty. They choose to feel loved. Let them feel loved. You, your only job every single day, moment to moment, is to stay, keep the focus on you. Mm-hmm. I don't like this. When the person's behaving like this, I don't like this. So I'm going to choose to be in the environment that suits me. A lot of time people stay at their job because they don't know how to get out of it. They hate everything about it, but they just go there for one thing and that attachment to money. You got to look at that, right? Because the only belief you have is like, I'm not worthy and good enough to receiving more money, but I'm going to sit here, tolerate people's stuff. What you tolerate persist. So where are your boundaries at? You are not honoring your soul. You're forcing yourself to be in an environment that you don't want to be. But in all reality, you have option to find something that suits you. Universe has something for you that matches your vibration. So go there. But you have to be willing to do the work. The work is, I do want something better. I do deserve this. I do want more money. And I could find people, places, things that will serve me. That's coming from an empowered state, not from a state of, this place is shitty. I hate being here. Like, see, it's two completely different energy of what you focus on. So what you're going to focus on, you're going to get. And it's mixed bag of, bag of Skittles. This is what the universe is about. You have option to choose from what Skittle of color you want. Pick the color, pick those out, leap. <laughs> I love that. All right, love. Love and relationships. Is... The relationship that individuals are in, is that a reflection of how much they either love or don't love themselves? So to clarify, I I often feel that people, friendships, relationships are mirroring something Mm -hmm. back to us, either Mm -hmm. something that we like or something that we don't like. Mm -hmm. And the more we go on this internal journey of what is love, am I loving myself, that is often, to me, played out externally through other individuals. Mm-hmm. 
Do either of you have a perspective or a thought on love in general and what people are either receiving or not receiving? Receiving love is the hardest thing. It's really hard. I'm learning that I'm on that path of receiving. I was so used to giving love. Uh, Being an empath, that's one of the things. You know, we just are, that's how we were built because we see it. We see the truth. We want to see the higher perspective of others, but we are not able to receive it. I mean, we can't even receive a thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if I complimented you, we're going to deflect it off. Oh, I like uh, this. I like that. But you can't even receive that fullness of compliment, you know, and that's part of love, too. Universe is like sending you signals like, I'm going to throw you this compliment. I'm going to see. I'm going to test you if you could receive it. If you can't receive a compliment, how can it deliver a bigger, better person that you want in your life if you can't even receive a little compliment? I think that's true. And then beyond that, though, based on my experience, right, I'll start there beyond just like a generalization for everything. But you go through different experiences as you're finding yourself. And so sometimes Mm -hmm. it can be a reflection and sometimes it can be that how you're receiving it is as a way to learn. Um, I think about my relationships that I've had more from the learning experience of them and saying like, hey, okay, is this how it's going? Is this what you want? Is this where you're headed? Is this, does this match up? Going back to your contract, right? With your soul, does this match up with where you're headed? If you look at astrology or anything like that, numerology and coming back to that. And then it's how hard are you going to fight to continue (laughs) on the path that you are planned to go on? You still have free will, right? So you are you going to fight that and what's going to come up along that way? Or are you going to go with the ease and go with where it's going? Okay, sometimes you've got to work through it and it may be where you're working through something that you didn't realize was connected to you at some point, right? If you're not fully aware of what happened previously or something to someone else. A lot of it's about the understanding and the compassion and then saying, okay, here's where it's at. What am I going to choose to do next? And and that doesn't change, right? Like, especially in a relationship, that doesn't change. Just because you walk away doesn't mean that you don't love them. Their love is unconditional. That it will always be there. It's just that physical condition aren't adding up. And you have every right to walk away from that. But that doesn't mean you're going to stop loving them just because you walk away. You could still send them unconditional love, light, healing energy for both of you for being a part of that relationship. But know that you have every right to honor your desires. And don't let anybody tell you you're not. That's amazing. I know you're about ready to say something. Well, no. (laughs) So it's... Yeah, because you ahead. can connect in different ways, but and so it might be great on a physical level, it might be great mm-hmm. on an emotional level, but is it good on all levels? Mm-hmm. Correct. Do people do you think they need to be clear with the universe? Like tell the universe this is what I want, or do they need to be completely open that the universe has something better in mind? A little bit of both. It's going to go back to your belief system, right? What are you going to believe? But if you have a belief that universe is magical, it's going to deliver exactly what I need at this time, and it's going to be part of my growth, and I'm willing to accept that, I will take that opportunity. But at the end of the day, universe will still work through that person and give you red flags. Hey, but that person doesn't know. So, but universe is kind of working through them to give you hints and clues. It's like, okay, this is against your boundaries. Are you willing to accept that? And then if you said, yeah, I'm going to bypass my boundary and I'm going to accept that, then you just broke your own contract with yourself. And you're going to accept this person, hoping that person will change. But that's never going to. Unless that person is willing to grow with you. It's it's complicated, especially in a relationship dynamic. Because both people have to have that willing to grow mindset. And if the one person has a willing to grow mindset, the other person wants to stay where they are. Guess who's losing out. Do you think people have to become what they want? So let's say there's a woman out there and she's like, I want a man that's successful. Do you think that they have to have an aspect of their life that they feel successful in to have that match? Their goal is this is unconditional. This is not conditional. So I would stay focused on I am successful. I am, I could be, do, and have anything I want. I am already successful. Look how many things I've gone through in my life. So staying focusing on like that unconditional aspect, but not so much at the physical, because that's how universe understands it is through how you feel and think. And then that creates a vibration, which that vibration matches somebody to pull that person in. So if you're not, if you want somebody successful, 
and you're not at that frequency, universe can't deliver that. Right. Because you got some stuff going on that is just not matching. But when you're ready and when you come into that full unconditional love within yourself, when you're super fulfilled and your cup is overfilling, universe will align you to somebody that matches that frequency. It's just a frequency game. I think that's true, the frequency part, but it's also important, and you made this when you asked the question, Abby, about aspect of successful, right? Because if you're thinking about, let's go to Pretty Woman, right? You know, there was different reasons <laughs> for why they got together, right? Um, and they seemed happy. I don't know what happened at the end after the movie, but of course, right? Um, but with that, so your thought of what are you successful with and what you want to be successful, I think that does have a lot to do with how you're going to connect. It may not mean that you're saying, hey, I'm financially successful and he's financially successful. It may mean that you're successful in some other aspect that Correct. the two come together. Correct. And that's when the two come together and that healing, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that, or the coordination with the universe starts to mm -hmm. work through. Yeah, and it's successful has so many different meanings, too. I feel like in society, we will taught that success is only comes when money is there. But my successful experiences in my life has been completely different. Right. Like, even if I p broke my old pattern and I'm into no pattern, that's a success for me. That, you know, that's how, what I focus Heck on. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't focus on what I have materially. I right. focus on what I have spiritually because that's part of my evo soul evolution, which is going to benefit me in my next lifetimes. My physical reality is going to sit here. I don't care. I, I always I say. I care about the experiences. Yeah, I always say, like, happiness is the new rich. Yeah. Like, unless you're happy, you have nothing. Like, I don't care how much you Correct. have. And when you say tuned into that happiness frequency, man, universe will deliver everything to you in that moment in time. Mm -hmm. I mean, me and Emily went out to dinner. I mean, we have both experienced wonderful things. Just magical restaurants. I mean, we get VIP service. We get, we get free stuff just because we're happy. We're, we're overfilling with our love. And people felt they were like, oh, you guys are so nice here. We'll give you mm -hmm. this. We'll give you that. I mean, come on. Like, That's you can awesome. make the stuff up. I mean, I had to try it and then put it into into physical reality and then I had to watch everything come to me just because I was happy. I mean, yeah, I can't even describe it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really amazing. And then how you view the world starts to change, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, man, all of this keeps coming. Abundance. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And feeling you have it. And then people felt that around you, right? So, I mean, we even changed our the waiter that we, yeah. we changed his perspective. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, like you never even, I'm like, welcome to our life. <laughs> It was good. So a first person listening to this podcast will go on both sides. We'll start with part somebody being single, somebody already in a marriage for a couple of years. The single individual, where do they start? They're interested in being in a relationship. They're looking for love. Where do they start? My thing would be, what are your perspectives on love, right? If you're going to say love will never find me, this this person did X, Y, Z to me, and I'm holding on to that, you're, you're going to be waiting for a long time until you <laughs> change those beliefs. Um, so you have to learn to transmute those feelings and thoughts because those thoughts will trigger certain feelings because let's say somebody backstabbed you in a love relationship, right? You're holding on to that backstabbing in an emotion-wise. Until you is acknowledged by you, you won't be able to move on. So the next relationship you're getting, that person's going to do the same thing because you're holding on to that. So until you could learn to let that go, um, hey, I, I understand this person does this to me before. I know not everybody's like that, but I am willing to give myself another chance. See how that is more flowing? It's more open. You're not resisting your own self. You let go of that resistance to love your own self. Things will come into your life. Right. But you have, it starts with you, not externally. It starts with you internally first. Yeah. You're providing that care for yourself mm -hmm. to go through that and like appreciating what you have gone mm -hmm. through so you clearly know more about mm -hmm. what you do want. And then it opens up, it releases any fear, right? Mm -hmm. There's this difference if you see the world as a scary place versus if you see the world as a place where we're growing, we're learning, we're experiencing, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, right? Even with the not so great things that happen. Um, that's part of that learning process. Right, and, and that's so. challenging, right? When people, you knew, I went through so much stuff in my life, and I'm like, I just kept, all I kept saying, this too shall pass. That was mm -hmm. like the word that I like hung on to. I'm like, it's just moment in time. I know that I, this is just temporary. I'm not going to be here all the time. But allowing myself to really take that in and feeling it, that kind of kept me forward. Versus me staying, 
oh, this is shitty where I'm at. I'm going to stay here forever. Like, see the two different frequency. Right. When you say, I'm going to stay here forever, you're going to stay there forever. <laughs> so just tuning those little words, just tuning those little, the feeling that you get, just uplift yourself moment to moment and see where it leads you. Don't forget the bigger picture. Just enjoy the moment to moment experiences. I used to say an affirmation and it would be, I am worthy of love. I am worthy of receiving love. I am worthy of giving love just to kind of open mm-hmm. up my mm-hmm. fr- frequency mm-hmm. of that. Like I love love. I love being in love. <laughs> I had a hard time receiving love. Uh-huh. So for some reason that affirmation always gave me peace. Now, on the other side, let's say somebody's been married one year, 10 years, 30 years. Mm-hmm. They're maybe in a difficult place. Where do they go? How do they freshen up that area for themselves? Well, I'm not married yet, but <laughs> <laughs> to me from that perspective would be is other person is willing to grow with you? Is other person willing to make changes with you? It's po- That's the only simple question. And if they're not... You have your answer. I mean, I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth, right? So often we are like, we're holding on to a marriage that is fulfilling to both parties, but nobody's acknowledging it. And we're living in denial. Sure. And that denial keeps a lot of people in loops Mm -hmm. because they don't see any other way out. But you always have a choice. People remember always, you always have a choice. I don't care how big, how small. Just choose. You're either when you don't make a choice, you're still choosing not to make a choice. There is no escape from making choices. So just taking it little by little and for being really clear and honest with what you mean, not what comes out of your mouth, but what you truly mean. In marriages, people have a hard time explaining that, what you really mean. People try to word things differently so you don't hurt somebody or whatever, but it's like you still have to speak what you really mean. And when you speak really means, other person could sense what you're saying. And when other person could sense, okay, she's really coming from a place of she really wants to make this work. I see that. On an energetic level, I see that. Okay, now I have a choice. She's putting a pressure on me. Do I want to grow this with her or just not? And that person, and then you'll know it's just not it. You know, I want, I choose to walk away. I know, I mean, the, again, the love will always stay, but is the physical condition aren't adding up to the love that you are. It's a conscious decision, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so that choice is part of it. So if it is something where, like, there's, you know, communication or emotional, something like that, it's good to say, like, I'm here, you know, to start your conversations. I'm here with you, right? You're there together. You're part of it together. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to open up that conversation and go there from more of a tactical Mm -hmm. standpoint. Mm -hmm. Another part is, so habits take time to build Mm -hmm. and they take time to lose. So one good thing that I've used previously for, you know, why am I in this relationship with Mm -hmm. whether this is love or other aspects, right? Mm -hmm. What was that initial thing that sparked my interest and inspired me to be part of this? Is that what's continuing or is that missing? And Mm -hmm. did I lose it? And how can I bring that back? Or is it something that we've grown through and either we're going separate directions or we're going to come back and grow together on? Mm -hmm. So those are good things. And then Again, going back to the, like, it starts with you. So if, you know, no matter what, if you're bringing yourself to that level and that frequency and they want to come with you, Mm -hmm. whoever it is, that will start to shift Mm -hmm. as long as you come back into your natural frequency and work with them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not married either. (laughs) (laughs) But I've seen some of those, like, conversations. Two of the most eligible (laughs) bachelorettes in the (laughs) Illinois Valley, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I've, you know, seen enough relationships over time and it's interesting. Yeah. Because there's there's a lot of connection when you really have that and you make that commitment. You're making that contract. It is. And then at the end of the day, either way you go, there is no right or wrong. Mm-hmm. It is working out for you. If you stay together, it's working for you. If you don't stay together, it's working for you. Mm-hmm. But don't think of it, it's happening to you. I just want to be very emphasizing on this because people when you play this happened to me you're playing in that victim reality where you think you have no choice but you do always have a choice I don't care what you say so it's always working for you so just say okay if this works out if he's willing to work with me great we're for it if we're not willing to work that's great too I'll find somebody else who's willing to work with me point blank simple don't make this complicated (laughs) okay so now we hear a lot out there about soulmates Twin flames, <laughs> karmic partners. It probably drives you crazy. 
Oh, yeah. Is it real? Does it exist? Or again, it's we are in charge of saying this is my soulmate. This is my karmic partner. You know, is this a real thing or is this something that we have just labeled as human beings? Going back to the soul contracts, like the original blueprint that you came into Earth with, it's really important to know thyself. When you know thyself, you'll know exactly what relationship you need to be in. It could either be a soulmate or a twin flame. It's it's just something that is knowing that kicks in, that you just know. I just know that there's somebody out there for me and it's just meant for me and we're meant to be together. It's just that feeling. And then other relationship won't work out because of that contract that you have with that person. Mm -hmm. And at least that's been the experience for me. And when other people did come into my life, I just kind of knew that this is not for me, but they're here to teach me in this moment and now something about relationship. So I chose myself to be in the relationship with them, but knowing that they're not, we're not meant to spend a long-term relationship, right? But they had a lot to teach. It was like getting ready to be ready to be ready to receive that big love that I want. But being really patient with yourself in the process of it because it's not an overnight thing. And if you want to, if you're on a twin flame journey, it's going to start with you with filling your cup with fullness of love um, and success for yourself. And then the other person will match that. And that's simple point blank period. Um, Soulmate connections are more like. They come in to teach you certain aspects of you that you've forgotten with them in past lifetimes. They come in to be your uh, friend. Um, it's more like understanding perspective, but you just know that you're here to guide each other, but not meant to be together. Unless some people settle for soulmates, that's fine too. But that's just something that I've learned that you have to keep shooting for what you exactly want. And if, it, if that person doesn't match that, it's your will to keep going until you find that. Do you feel like you know that when it happens or is it something that, because there is that energy pulling mm-hmm. together, yeah. right? But do you feel like you know that that's the person deep down, right, through through your own connection or is it something that sometimes you have to learn? So, because you can tell yourself and our thoughts help build that. And this is the part that I'm like, I'm working through because I've had, I mean, I've thoroughly enjoy the relationships I've had yeah, yeah, granted yeah. yeah there's been some things that I was like gosh I gotta heal that right yeah. <laughs> and I've gone through that process as far as I know I'm sure there's probably plenty more of self-growth over there but how do you know um when I run into my twin flame I'll let you know how I know <laughs> Because I don't think any of the titles are good or bad. Like, yeah, karmic partner used to freak me out. Because I was like, oh, seriously? Like, you're here to bring <laughs> lessons. And now I've tried to embrace soulmate, karmic partner, twin flame. At the end of the day, they're all just labels. Right. right. Yeah. Not to cut you off. But at the end of the day, they're all just labels. But at the, well, all it's pointing to you to go back to yourself. Whatever love that you strongly desire within yourself is able to manifest in your physical reality. How much are you willing to believe that? Or are you willing to settle for something less? Are you willing to settle for what you have now? That's the only question. Or are you willing to work on yourself until you find somebody that clicks with you? That's it. It's just the frequency game at the end of the day because the universe doesn't understand words. It understands how you feel what you're vibrating at. So if you can't vibrate at love frequency, you're vibrating at a fear frequency and love. How can a universe deliver that? So as we change our frequency individually, Uh are you saying we're able to see people at a better frequency when we just raise ours? You are, because when you raise your own frequency, your aura automatically uh, expands. And when your aura expands, it's able to grab everything in the vicinity that matches that expansion. But when you're in fear, your aura is very restricted and confined. So you will pull people that are restricted and confined. Universe never lies. It will bring you exactly where you vibrate at now. So if it does, let's say somebody does come come into your vicinity, your first job is to see, okay, what am I observing? What is this teaching me? What path do I have with it? Like when Abby, me and you met, I just knew there was a knowing that clicked in. It was like, I just know her. She's she's a big part of my life, it's, you know, as far as like a soul growth. Sure. Um, and it just kind of clicked in. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow that. So I just, fo- I keep following that until universe tells me no more. It's just that. And then not overthinking that. Sometimes we overthink things mm-hmm. and we kill what's good i mean i'm sure people meet great people and then we by overthinking it we kill it (laughs) oh is this going to work out is this not going to work out and then you're putting fear into that and then the fear overtakes you and then now that other person feels that you're pulling back and then that that person's going to start pulling back and now it's like oh we don't get along 
<laughs> well, and I think it's always this game between, and I shouldn't even call it a game, but for me, I'm always having to determine, okay, I'm just supposed to send love or he, there's some healing that's supposed to be either going back and forth mm-hmm. or forgiving, forgiveness. Like I'm always determining between the three. Uh-huh. And so the relationship world is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once those things start intertwining, Saloni mentioned entanglements earlier, it can really be interesting, and those can be different depending on what entanglements you had previous to meeting that person or not, you know? It gets interesting, for sure. Yeah, and then at the end, the one thing that I'm learning on my soul path is the only relationship I need to worry about is the, the relationship I have with God, Source, Universe. When I build that foundation so strong, nothing else in the physical world could touch me. Because source will protect me because I'm protecting what it has to say and bring to me. So, but you have to become so confident in that belief that nothing else could touch you and shake you. Mm -hmm. And that's unconditional love. Not everybody is willing to go there. I love it. And it's not easy because once you build that relationship, things will, source will cover your ass and bring you things as you need Mm -hmm. as you go over your path. But... We, especially light workers, we have such a messed up relationship. I had to heal that because I, I hated trusting God. I hated trusting source because I felt some sort of betrayal from past wars, past uh, shock and trauma from the other planet getting destroyed. There was a lot of shock and trauma that I remember that I was mad at source. I'm like, God, why did you let that happen? But I was stopping, and then I just lost complete trust and patience in that. And then I was mad at So I had to learn to forgive the universe. I had to look at it from the higher perspective. I had to change a lot of little things within that dynamic. In that paradigm that I lived, I'm like, oh, I'm dragging all of these stories from my past until now moment, which is affecting me now. What am, how am I willing to look at source from a new perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I trust you. I have patience in you. And let's create this relationship with you. I'm going to commit myself to trusting in what you have to offer. And I trust that everything you bring to me is for my benefit. And if I just keep having these experiences that is for my benefit, I know you have something bigger for me. And I'm willing to go there. So that was a huge thing for me, (laughs) just to forgive God itself, right? I love it. Any final words on love, on soul contracts that you guys want to add to wrap up this first amazing series? Don't ever give up. Keep working on yourself until you know what you're capable of achieving. Confidence is something that we've lost along the way, but when you were born... You were born with the confidence and intuitive abilities that your experience taught you not to believe. But if you learn to develop that muscle again of intuitive ability and having confidence again, you will achieve everything in your life effortlessly. So keep going in that direction. Keep focusing on you. Yeah, I agree with that and believe in your perfection, even with your imperfections, right? When you're continuing to work on yourself, you're building that within not to create a perfectionist type of world, but at the same time, create that idea mm-hmm. that you can work to that effortless time frame. Love is yeah. love. Love, love is, is beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's really tied to compassion and understanding, too. Mm-hmm. So really keeping that. Are yeah. you going to add one, Abby? Yeah, I'm going to add one thing. <laughs> yes. Only okay, because w- when we mentioned a few times to know thyself, and I'm sure people are like, well, how do I do that? And the route that I like to take is figure out what do you like, what do you not like, mm-hmm. How do you respond in traffic when yes. somebody cuts you <laughs> off? All of that, the deeper you start to uncover the things that you enjoy, mm-hmm. your responses, your behavior, mm-hmm. food, mm-hmm. The company that you surround yourself Correct. with, that is when all of that can start to be uncovered. Yeah. At least those are the first steps, in my opinion, to absolutely. starting to know yourself. You're absolutely That's right. Good. Your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So. So again, it comes to self-fulfillment. Get very clear on what you will tolerate, will you not tolerate, what you like, what you don't like, uh, and being very speaking what you really mean for yourself and for the sake of other person because you don't want to keep anything hidden. Because when you keep things hidden, other per- people could sense that you're keeping secrets. Mm-hmm. And that's when things go tangled. <laughs> so <laughs> try to stay out of that tanglement, but just stay, stay with your vibe. Yeah. Try to improve your vibe and you'll, you'll improve your reality. 
I love it. And if you have any questions after hearing the podcast, put your questions in the comment section below. We'll be sure to answer and address them in future podcasts. But for now, thank you everybody for joining us, sending a lot of light and love out there and look forward to what's going to unfold along this journey. 